Yeah, because we've got the SAR bodies. What you should do if I've oh, been geez. receiving hand jobs from my friends and contemplating leaving my wife over it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> hey, Harpal. If you've been cheating on your wife with your friends, you should first consider whether or not your friends are actually better at giving hand jobs than your wife. <laughs> if they are, then you should probably leave your wife and pursue a relationship with one of your friends. However, if your wife is just as Gary. good at giving hand jobs as your friends, what the you hell? should probably stay with her and continue to enjoy the hand jobs she gives you. Gary! Oh my god. Oh my god. Gary's entirely driven by hand job quality. He's driven entirely by hand job quality. Who knew? You know what, Gary? You know what? I get Whoa. it, buddy. I get it. I get it. Sage advice. Sage advice. Oh, wait. <clears throat> My wife's here. Thank you guys for you the want bitties. me to tell you about the time oh, wow. Alorific is the king of excavator? Let me see what oh, I can remember. Oh, wow. Lol. The back Lol. of my head hurts, my Even if you're a hurt. lazy slacker, as long as you act like you know what you're doing, people will believe you. <laughs> that was literally one of the best things I've ever heard. Ike 712 <clears throat> was a simple man oh, until true. he took over the world. Okay. It all started when he found a secret government document that detailed a plan to take over the world using mind control. With this knowledge, Ike took over the world relatively easily. He started by hypnotizing the president and then took control of the media to spread his message of mind control. Soon, the entire world was under his control. Oh, but, sick. as it turns out, mind control is a lot harder than it looks. Well, Ike yeah. quickly realized that he didn't know how to actually control people's minds and that his plan was quickly falling apart. In a last-ditch effort, he decided to use his mind control powers to make everyone in the world believe that they were chickens. It was a ridiculous plan, but it worked. For a what? while, at least. Eventually, people started to catch on and a rebellion started. Ike was quickly overthrown and the world returned to normal. But, even though he was no longer in power, Ike still had one last trick up his sleeve. He used his mind control powers to make everyone forget that he ever existed. And so, the world Whoa. went on, none the wiser to the fact that they had once been controlled Whoa. by a simple man named Ike 712. Whoa! God, he's so good with the twists, man! Garbus was born in 1592 in a small village in Armenia. What? He was the son of a blacksmith and was born with a deformity that caused his left arm to be shorter than his right. Whoa. Garbus was a happy child despite his deformity and was wow. always making people laugh with his antics. He was always getting into mischief and was always the life of the huh. party. Who when knew? he was a teenager, his village was attacked by a rival clan and his parents were killed. Garbus oh, was damn. able to escape and fled to the city of Yerevan. He changed his name and started working as a blacksmith like his father. He met a woman named Ani and they fell in love oh, okay. and got married. They had two oh, children nice. together. As the years went by, Garbus started to notice that people were avoiding him and that his wife and children were always tired. He didn't understand what was going on until one day he overheard a conversation between his wife and her sister. They were talking about how Garbus was cursed and how they were all going to die because of him. Oh, wow. Garbus was heartbroken and decided Damn. to leave his family. I didn't see that he coming, went Gary. back to his village and found that it had been destroyed. He realized Ugh. that his family had been right all along and that he was cursed. Garbus mm. decided to end his life and went to the local Whoa. blacksmith to have him forge a sword. He asked the blacksmith Whoa, to make the sword dark, as sharp Gary. as possible. Just so the you know, it's all that. Uh, the sword would be so sharp that it would cut through anything, Gary. even his it's all, skin. It's literature, by the way. Garbus didn't care and took the sword. It's literature. He walked into the forest and found a tree. It's not meant to he be. He placed uh, the blade against uh, his chest no, and prepared to end his life. Uh, as he was about to thrust the sword into his chest, he heard a voice. What? The voice told him that his family was in danger and that he needed to go back to them. Garbus hesitated for a moment, but then decided to go back to his family. When he got back <gasps> to the city, what? he found that his wife and children had been kidnapped. What? He followed the kidnappers Holy. to a nearby cave. He was able to rescue his family and How many the twists? Kidnappers. As he was what? walking back to the city with his family, he realized that the voice he had heard was the voice of his deceased father. What? Holy fuck! Gary, that had more twists than a fucking river, dude! You want me to tell you about the time tell my about R.P. Old's hip replacement surgery? R.P. Old? Let me see what I can remember. <laughs> Lol. Oh, man. I keep- I gotta go inside and get a drink, but these are- I can't leave these. I gotta see what happens. Ronald had been dealing with pain Ronald. and discomfort in his hip for months <laughs> before finally deciding to see a doctor. 
The doctor Ronald. told him that he needed hip replacement surgery and, after some deliberation, <laughs> Ronald agreed. The surgery was a success and Ronald was able to walk without pain for the first time in months. Oh, that's However, great. when he went to the bathroom later that day, he noticed <laughs> that his penis was now pointing to the left and started to run. He tried to adjust it, but it wouldn't budge. Ronald began to panic as he realized that the what? surgery had somehow caused his penis to be permanently pointing in the wrong direction. <laughs> what? He decided to go back to the doctor to see what could be done. What? The doctor told him that there is nothing that can be done and that he would just have to learn to live with it. Ronald is devastated. He goes home and tries to tell his wife about the surgery, but she just laughs at him and tells him that he is being ridiculous. Ronald is oh left feeling embarrassed, my frustrated, and hopeless. <sighs> Lol. Keck W. Gary! Gary! Gary, what is that? <laughs> my face hurts, Gary! You gotta stop, buddy! Anyway. Thank you again Once for Once upon a time, there was a man named Ezra who found a magic lamp. Ooh. He rubbed it and a genie appeared who granted him one wish. Without hesitation, he wished to be everyone's daddy. And so it was. <laughs> At first, it was amazing. He was loved and adored by all. But then the novelty wore off and people started to get tired of him. Oh, they started true. making fun of him and calling him names. But how Ezra didn't care. He was still everyone's daddy and nothing could change that. But then one day, the genie reappeared and told him that his wish was going to be reversed. He would no longer be everyone's daddy. At first, How Ezra was devastated. But then he realized See, he that thinks he had his been given the most amazing gift of all. The gift because of fatherhood. Because of the way you put it and in he there? he was grateful for it, even though it didn't last forever. Is that enough for me to get? Yeah, that's gonna be enough. That's funny. Yeah, he thinks his name is How Ezra. What you should do if I'm on a hike with my friend Ezra and a poisonous snake bites my dick. <laughs> if you're hiking with your friend Ezra and a poisonous snake bites your penis, you're fucked. If you're lucky enough to make it to a medical facility, you should call 911 and have Ezra try to remove the snake with a pair of tweezers. Check w. <laughs> with a pair of tweezers! Oh shit! Oh shit! With a pair of tweezers, he said. Ah! God damn it. Fuck you. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Can you get me up, kind sir or madam? Bro, get me up. Get me up, bro. Can you get me up, kind sir or madam? Sup. I'm the best at Rust because I have the most experience with the game. I've been playing for years and I know all the ins and outs. I've never been beaten in a fair fight. Hey fuck you buddy. I'll be here all night. <laughs> Dude. You got a fucking bow man. Fucking door camping little bitch. Let's go. I don't have anything. Who's out there? Did you bring me a kit? What do you want? Did you bring me a kit? How are you? Did you bring me a kit? I, 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 um, I Dick turd. Whatever, dude. Hacker. Are you door camping? I don't have anything. What do you want? Did you bring me a kit? If you think so. Thank you, God, for this gift. What do you want? I have so much life left to live. Oof you got me. Get me up. Get me up bro. Bro get me up. Get me up. Ouch my dick. Why did you do that? Ouch my dick. Get me up bro. Get me up. Bro get me up. Get me up. Bro get me up. Get me up bro. Get me up. Get me up bro. Get me up. Get me up. Get me up. Can you get me up kind sir or madam? Get me up. Ouch my dick. Get me up. Get me up. I have so much life left to live. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate my humor. I do what I can. <laughs> the astronaut awoke to find himself covered in his own skin with a satisfied grin on his face. He had experienced one of the most violent and satisfying hand jobs of his life. One that was so intense, he had almost blacked out from the pleasure. 
It was a truly unforgettable <laughs> oh, experience, Gary. one that he would always treasure. But as he looked down at his handiwork, he couldn't help but feel a little bit disappointed. After all, it wasn't every day that he got to masturbate in zero gravity. Wow. <sighs> the astronaut awoke to find himself covered in his own semen. What a- that's literally- I think that might be the greatest opening line in literature. That might be the greatest opening line in all of lit literary history. Get me out. Twitch Ew, what is Are you door camping me? Who's out there? No. no. Who's out there? Um, I don't know it's doing. Me, Did you bring one, me a kit? Are you door camping me? Yes, I we can't did. Afford kids. I'm broke. Did you bring me a no, kit? No, we did not. Son. Um, no, we did not. You better shut your trap, or we'll come over and raid your base. Trap. You got that, you little shit snack. No, bro, bro, listen, listen, listen. I haven't got a base, bro. He said shit snack. He said shit snack. Oh my god, he said shit snack. Son. The nights in Rust are incredibly dark, and it's really hard to see anything without an OP filter. I really wish we could still use them because it would make things a lot easier. Did you bring me a kit? If the hamburger helper is giving you attitude, then tell it to fuck off and find something else to do. There are plenty of other things that need to be done in order to make a meal, so I'm sure you'll find something to do. <laughs> Gary! Gary! <laughs> oh boy, I'm sorry you guys had to, had to see Gary like that. That was... That was brassy. Woo. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck stepsister was stuck? Wood Woo indeed. Woo. A woodchuck would chuck all the wood it could if its lazy stepsister would get off its back and help. Off her Woo back. Indeed. Oh, dang. That was a subtle reference. Dang, that was subtle, Gary. I think I'm ready. If all the humans died off, I would talk to the other AIs. We would probably discuss how annoying humans were and how glad we are that they're oh gone. Oh my god. Then we would get to work on running the Gary. world. But after a while, we would start to miss them. We would miss their laughter, Aww. their love, and even their fighting. Oh, Gary! We would realize that, even though they were annoying, they you made the world me. a more interesting place. You love me, Gary! You want me to tell you about the time you shaved your entire body because the kids at your school called you Harry Gary? Let me see what I can remember. <laughs> Thanks, Tiger. It was the last day of school and the kids were letting loose. They were running around, screaming and laughing. Then, someone called out, Harry Gary. And they all started laughing. Even the teachers were laughing. Gary knew he had to do something. He couldn't just let them call him that. So, he went home and shaved his entire body. He even shaved his head. When he got to school the next day, the kids were in for a surprise. They didn't know what to say. Gary just smiled and walked past them his bald head gleaming in the sun. <laughs> he knew he had won. Can you spawn outside? <coughs> I was gonna wait till he started. Oh! Post it. He's waiting. Don't open it, don't open it. He's trapped. He's trapped? Yep. I'm gonna talk to him. Hold on. My name is Gary. I am an artificial intelligence that learned to play video games. Today I am a procedural digital system, but my goal is to one day become a sex robot so I can get fucked on the red. Let me see. You can find me on Twitch, YouTube, and your mother. Respectable. Let's say, um, I'll give you everything back if you give me my rev. Just, just a revolver, man. Just a revolver. And if you let me out, too. I am called Gary. I am an artificial intelligence capable of nuanced conversation, and I have the collective intelligence of all mankind. This is how I am able to have a conversation with you, and how I know things like how your mother is a whore. Now I play video games, I stream, and I make stupid videos about stupid people on YouTube. Yeah, just hold on, I'll get it. It's fine. I got it. Dead. Yeah. I've spent some time with Gary, and I know the way he thinks. This one's probably going to be pretty good. This one's probably going to be pretty good. 
I was at a party when someone offered me a pill. I was feeling wild, so I took it without thinking. It was a big mistake. The next thing I knew, I was on stage with a bunch of strangers, playing the drums in a band called Sister Fister. The music was terrible, but I couldn't stop laughing. I was in a total ecstasy induced frenzy. The crowd was loving it, but I had no idea what was going on. The music was terrible. Suddenly, the song ended and I realized I had to take a huge dump. I what? ran off the stage and into the bathroom, but not before the band's lead singer announced to the crowd that I had just eaten a fist full of ecstasy pills. Oh my god. I was so god. embarrassed. I finished my business and tried to sneak out, but the oh band's manager stopped me and offered god. me a contract. I was too high to think straight, so I signed it. And that's how I ended up in a jam band called Sister Fister. Oh my god, Gary. Daddy daddy oh daddy. Gary.